Hello, it's me, Moses Ender. After doing now a couple of videos on battery safety related topics, I thought it's now time to talk about what happens in case a battery failure results in a fire or explosion. The more scientific nomenclature for such a catastrophic failure of a lithium-ion battery is thermal runaway. In this video, I will cover what a thermal runaway is and what exactly is happening in the battery while it occurs. So what is meant by thermal runaway? Well, it is a self-propelling decomposition reaction. The reaction is initiated by heat, which lets the battery reach a critical temperature. But this reaction itself is also releasing heat, so it is an exothermal reaction. But since the reaction was enabled by heat in the first place, the reaction accelerates with increasing temperatures, releasing even more heat, and so on. I'm sure you get the concept. The result is a battery fire, as shown here in the case of an overcharged lithium ion cell. It can be very difficult to extinguish. Before we dive into the details of the reactions, let's start with some general basics and let's understand how the thermal runaway is, in, is triggered. You have probably heard of the fire triangle. For a fire to occur, it needs three things. A fuel, oxygen and heat. In today's lithium ion batteries, we have several kinds of fuel. The organic electrolyte, all plastic components, for example the separator, and also the graphite in the anode. We also have oxygen in the cell, which is bound in the cathode structure. If you take, for example, lithium cobalt oxide, or LiCoO2 for short, you have two oxygen atoms for each lithium atom. Luckily, the oxygen is usually bound in the crystal structure. Right, usually. Which means there are also unusual cases where the oxygen can be released. That can be triggered by an overcharge of the cell or by excessive heating. This means you have everything you need to start a fire already in your cell. The only trigger it needs is heat to reach the critical temperature. So heat is always the trigger of a thermal runaway. But what is heating your battery? Unfortunately, there are plenty of different ways that can lead to the heating of your battery. Most obviously, it can be an external heat source, like a fire, a failing electronics or a nearby heating device. But a battery can also heat up itself during discharge due to its internal resistance. In normal operation, this is usually not a problem. However, in an overload situation or worse, in an external short circuit, the self-heating can become critical. The same is obviously true in case of an internal short of a cell. Another source of heating can be the overcharge of a lithium-ion cell. The chemical side reactions that happen inside the cell during an overcharge generate heat, which also can lead to critical temperatures. But when is temperature becoming critical? To find that out, there's a scientific method called accelerating rate calorimetry, or short ARC. I don't want to go too much into the details of this method in this video, but it can essentially measure very precisely the heating rate caused by the exothermic reactions. This way, it can be measured when the first reactions start and when the main heat release happens. A typical result of an arc measurement looks like this. We measure the cell temperature over time and increase the calorimeter temperature stepwise. Then we wait until the temperature has stabilized. If it's stabilized, we apply another heating step and repeat again. This is called the heat wait seek method and we continue with that stepwise heating until the temperature does not stabilize anymore. This is the case if an exothermic reaction starts that leads to self-heating. From that moment on, we just wait and observe the temperature evolution. Since several types of reactions happen in a lithium-ion battery, that curve is not increasing smoothly, but it depends on when the different reactions start. So what we see here is that the first reactions seem to start at around 90 to 100 degrees C. And the really rapid temperature increase happens somewhere in that range of 180 to 200 degrees C. Between the first onset of the side reactions and the actual thermal runaway, there are hours. And the only reason it results eventually in a thermal runaway is because the calorimeter applies an adiabatic condition to the battery. In a real battery, the small amount of heat generated by the side reactions would be easily dissipated to the ambient. 
Only once you reach temperatures that are closer to the 180 to 200 degrees C, a real thermal runaway will be unavoidable. These different phases of the self-heating of a lithium ion cell are due to different reactions that happen inside the cell. It all starts with a breakdown of the solid electrolyte interface, or short SEI. At higher temperatures, the electrolyte reacts with the anode, and eventually the cathode material collapses, which together with the subsequent reactions, releases the majority of the energy. This is shown in this X-ray video from Donald Finnegan, where you can see the rapid structural change during the reaction, and all of that happens within only one second. What is important to understand is that the total amount of energy released during the rapid phase of the thermal runaway is about two times the amount of the stored electrical energy. So if we take a 3 amp hour 18650 cell as an example, it has an electrical energy content of about 11 watt hours. Translated into joule, it is about 40 kilojoule. That might not sound that scary, but the dangerous part is that the battery has got the required oxygen for the reaction included. Therefore, the combustion happens much faster and it has some explosive power. This paper of Shao et al. presents a calculation of the TNT equivalent based on the recorded pressure curves. One fully charged 18650 cell, with 2 amp hour in this case, had a TNT equivalent of around 5 grams, according to their calculation. One important thing to note is that most calorimeter experiments are done in an inert atmosphere. That means the measured amount of energy is only originating from the reactions that occur between the components of the cell under investigation. What is neglected is the combustion energy of the released gases and of some of the solid content that can burn if exposed to the oxygen of the ambient atmosphere. According to Professor Quintier, the energy released during the combustion of the generated gases increases the total amount of released energy by a factor of 2 to 2.5. So even if the overall amount of energy may not be huge, especially for small cells, the rapid release of this energy is what causes the problem and makes it potentially dangerous. That is of course especially true for large automotive or stationary lithium-ion batteries that contain a couple of thousand times the energy of a single cell. Fortunately, the explosive power doesn't scale in the same way, since a battery consists typically of many cells. Still, if you consider an 80 kWh battery pack, the total heat released if it catches fire is in the range of 1.1 to 1.4 GJ. That corresponds to something like 40 to 50 liters of gasoline. Not so different than what you would find in a fully fueled vehicle. So if the amount of energy is not so different, let's take a look what makes a difference if a large battery pack burns. If one cell goes into thermal runaway, the heat is in many cases sufficient to, to, to trigger a subsequent thermal runaway of a neighboring cell. This process is called thermal runaway propagation, and this is what this video shows. You can see and hear how the individual cells ignite or explode. And this effect is also what makes battery fires potentially so dangerous. Once the first cell went through its reaction, it might seem like the fire has ended but the heating process of the neighboring cell might already have started. For that reason, it is essential that you continue cooling a failed battery, even if no fire is visible anymore. This is also the reason why the firefighter sometimes dumped the complete electric vehicle into water after it caught fire. Only if the battery is completely cooled down, it can be considered safe. This brings me to the end of this video. I hope you have learned something new and you understand now why there are so many different safety mechanisms in place to avoid the nasty thermal runaway in the first place. If you found this video interesting, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again in one of my next videos. Till then, stay safe and stay charged.